Howdy folks, Parker Peters here, and today we're going to be talking about Fire Emblem Three Houses. Enjoy. Of all of the turn-based strategy games that were popularized in the West by Super Smash Bros. Melee, Fire Emblem has got to be my favorite. Fire Emblem is a long-running and popular series in Japan, but it never really caught on in the West until the 3DS release, Fire Emblem Awakening, and oh boy did Awakening catch on. Fire Emblem Awakening was a last-ditch effort by the developer to save the series, and let's just say it struck just the right chord with the general public and sold like the hottest of hotcakes. Two games and one Nintendo Switch later, we come to Fire Emblem Three Houses, a turning point for the series and a marked change in tone and pace, but does it live up to the massive hype surrounding the series? Let's find out. Fire Emblem Three Houses finds you playing as either the male or female version of a character that you're allowed to name, but is canonically named Byleth. Byleth is the main character, and the child of a mercenary turned professor at Garigmach Monastery, a military academy. You choose one of three houses, as is the name of the game, and set off on one of three branching paths in what adds up to one engrossing story about family, god, civil war, loyalty, and betrayal. It is a real banger of a tale, and I really don't want to spoil any of it for you. So just know that the twist halfway through leaves you on the edge of your seat. I loved the plot of this game, and all of the memorable, fully voiced characters made it just that much better. The story as it's presented gives off real Harry Potter cross persona vibes, and I think that is a recipe for success. And while it may be a little bit closer to ground level and perhaps a little less grandiose feeling than past entries, the story of Fire Emblem Three Houses is absolutely engrossing, and it will keep you flying through missions until the very end. I guess we're going to start off with the bad here. Fire Emblem Three Houses is what I like to call a diamond in the rough, or an ugly duckling. Yeah, Three Houses is kind of ugly, and that is really disappointing coming after the beautiful 2D pixel art and 3D polygonal hybrids that were on display in Fire Emblem Awakening and Echoes. What's presented in Three Houses is an ugly mishmash of clashing styles that look like they would be more at home on the PlayStation 2 rather than the Nintendo Switch. This change in visual design is likely an unfortunate side effect of the somewhat drastic change in gameplay styles between Three Houses and the last two entries. This game is much more open this time around with a huge, and I mean huge, explorable monastery for your protagonist to wander around between skirmishes. Seeing as previous Fire Emblem titles would not have any exploration whatsoever and menus would be the only user in action between battles, I guess you could say that this huge explorable environment that the developer had to create is what is to blame. After all, the character models and overall character design is good, bar a few pretty bad haircuts. So really it is just the environments that look ugly, but I mean come on. These are pretty ugly. As I said, character design is pretty well done, especially with your commanders of the three houses and the other professors at the monastery, but all of the primary casts are well fleshed out and realized as 3D character models. Every character that you can command also has dozens of different costumes for the various classes, and this is represented fully on their character model. That is going above and beyond, and this game is most certainly better for it. The one true saving grace of these visuals, besides the pretty solid character design, are these gorgeous FMV anime cutscenes. I love when there are real 2D professional anime style cutscenes in games like Fire Emblem. It adds a level of polish that just barely allows the visuals to scrape by with a 3 out of 5. As poor as the overall visuals might be, the presentation of Three Houses is slick and professional looking. After all, we are talking about Nintendo. Nintendo always embellishes and finely tunes the presentation, menus, and UI of their games. And this game is no exception. The menus on offer are mostly clear and concise, with good readable fonts and icons. All in-game dialogues are also accompanied by text boxes with well-realized portraits, showing the various facial expressions of the characters speaking. Despite the fact that the game is fully voiced, the developers still opted for these full dialogue boxes rather than plain subtitles, and I think that that is a nice addition in this case. 
basically three houses just hits a home run in the presentation department as always nintendo has gone above and beyond in every little corner of the presentation for instance the only 2d pixel art in the game appears in loading screens but this little chibi character can be controlled by tilting the joy cons or pro controller using the gyro controls a small detail but it just makes the experience feel more genuine and like the developers really care and love the product they're working on. I literally have no complaints here. Presentation scores nothing but net with a perfect 5 out of 5. From an audio standpoint, Three Houses absolutely blows it out of the water. In the music department, the game seems like it lives to please. With a beautiful and nuanced orchestral score from longtime series composer Takeru Kanazaki. From haunting full-bodied organ dirges to the pulse-pounding war drums of the combat themes, every last second of the soundtrack in Three Houses is just as good as a John Williams or Hans Zimmer score. The music in Three Houses is simply sublime, even if it's not something I would love to listen to every day. It definitely feels like it was composed with every bit of love and care as the rest of this game. Voice acting is also a huge part of the audio design, with about 80% of all of the dialogue in this game being fully voiced, and voiced pretty well at that. But our enemies will soon be discovered. When they are, will you lead us into battle? No labor is too great if it means saving Fodra. I went for a ride earlier today. Is that so? You'll have to tell me about it sometime when I'm not walking away. This is your typical anime voiceover, and it can dive deep into campiness at times, but overall, every last voice actor puts their all into their performance, and it pays off. There are a few stiff performances here and there, but nothing that doesn't play to those characters' personalities. Casting is spot on, and honestly, I have very few complaints. There is a lot of dialogue in this game, especially with the new emphasis on exploration of the monastery, and all of it is delivered capably and helps the player become attached to their fellow classmates. Sound effects and other audio cues are recorded and mixed with skill, peppered in inconspicuously, blending in with the game as good sound effects are wont to do. Audio lands a 9 out of 10. Gameplay-wise, Fire Emblem Three Houses is both a little more of the same, but an awful lot of the new. The combat is almost identical to previous entries, so much in fact that I feel there is almost no need to talk about it at all, but here we go anyway. Fire Emblem is a tactical RPG series, and as such, Three Houses mainly revolves around large-scale turn-based grid battles between two or more opposing armies. Fire Emblem has for years been known as a difficult series and is famous for its permadeath mechanic. Whenever a unit dies, they cannot be brought back. That death is permanent, as it is in real life. However, Fire Emblem Three Houses features a unique rewind mechanic that allows you to rewind several actions in battle. As you level up, this mechanic will become more and more powerful, making the game more than forgiving enough for even new players, and there should be no reason for you to lose any of your units permanently unless you really, really mess up. Some may argue that this feature makes the game too casual or even too easy, but it is entirely optional and there are going to be battles in which you are inevitably going to get trashed anyway, so don't worry about it too much. Overall, I would say it is a helpful feature and a quality of life improvement for most players. You'll raise a ragtag battalion from dozens of playable units mainly sorted into one of the three houses but you can, in many cases, recruit characters from other houses and around the monastery as long as you have the wherewithal and social skills to woo them. More on that tidbit in a minute. All characters are fully customizable with the ability to learn almost any class available in the game, as well as to respec to new classes later on. This level of customization is very nice and hasn't really been seen in a Fire Emblem game thus far. Series veterans will be glad to know that all the in-depth tactical combat is back with a slick and updated interface that allows for both classical grid-based movement or an all-new zoomed-in third-person perspective that allows the player to control the movement of their character in more of an action-oriented style, though the actual gears and machinations of combat work the same behind the scenes either way. 
I found this to be a neat, if not a bit disorienting of a feature, which is entirely optional, and which I ended up not using much, unless I wanted to get an up close look at the terrain or architecture on the battlefield, it is a neat but ultimately not very useful feature. Other than that, the notable addition to combat is the use of gambits, a command given to a whole battalion of soldiers to charge, attack, and otherwise overwhelm your opponents. These gambits are useful little bits of strategy and can have various effects on enemies depending on other variables on the battlefield. Priests and other healing classes can also use gambits to heal and otherwise aid their allies. A pretty neat little feature. And that's it for the old, a little bit of the old that is, now for the whole lot of new. Fire Emblem Three Houses exists in the long dark shadow of a game series which has grown to juggernaut status in the JRPG genre over the course of only five or so years. That's right, Persona. The game design philosophy of Three Houses borrows more from Persona than perhaps any other single source, even previous Fire Emblem titles. You, as a young new professor at a massive open world monastery, will assemble a team of teenage academy students and grow your relationships with these students through not only fighting together, but through conversations, activities, gifts, and yes, dates to tea time. You'll have to balance your work, school, and relationships on a calendar timeline, which ends with a large battle at the end of each month. Or, in other words, a near-carbon copy of the Persona gameplay dynamic. But that's not a bad thing, far from it. In fact, Fire Emblem absolutely kills it, pulling it off as though it were a series mainstay. This portion of the game, if you dive into it, will end up taking up over half of your playtime, with perhaps a hundred or more hours of relationship paths to give your time and attention to in all three houses. This is the biggest departure from previous Fire Emblem titles, which largely were a series of battles strung together with mildly interactive cutscenes. Not so in three houses, with a rather sizable chunk of the gameplay existing completely outside of battle. Of course, this has been a long time coming, with the relationships of characters suddenly becoming very important in Fire Emblem Awakening. Three Houses is merely the logical extreme of this gameplay style, and though it surely is a departure, it is sorely welcome in my opinion. This new addition to the formula slips into Fire Emblem and fits like lock and key. It's almost as if Fire Emblem was always meant to exist in this Persona, social link subgenre that has cropped up since the rise of Persona 4. And I think you would be hard pressed to find a Fire Emblem fan who doesn't love the new addition. Gameplay slams home a 9 out of 10. Fire Emblem Three Houses is a beefy package indeed, loaded with content, slathered in special sauce, and almost too big to fit in one's mouth for a bite. With so many relationships to cultivate, so many different characters to cord into your army, loads of side quests, a fishing minigame, and activities all around the monastery like gardening, statue upkeep, and even working in the cafeteria, you will not run out of things to do. The main quest of Three Houses will take you upwards of 40 hours to complete, which again is one of three branching paths, so there is a lot of content for you to unpack. Now you might be saying, relationships and dating sims are fun, but I wanna fight. Well, I have some good news for you. If the new gameplay elements become a little bit much for you, there is a seemingly infinite amount of skirmishes to play, some of which do not even count towards your time limit, so if at any time you feel like hitting up a classic Fire Emblem string of battles, you have a near bottomless barrel of those to sort through, grinding levels and gaining items and currency to spend on upgrades. Longevity lands an easy 9 out of 10. And welcome to bonus points, the part of the video where I give a game points just because I wanna. Not for any real reason, and definitely not because it deserves it. Does Fire Emblem even need bonus points with its near-perfect score already? Of course it does. It deserves points for its undeniable waifu factor. That's right, Three Houses doesn't just borrow from the more vanilla aspects of Persona, it has also filled this game to the brim with cute waifus and hunky beefcakes for you to drool over, and I guess what I'm trying to say is three points for Petra. That's right, three points for Petra, Best Girl 2019, Petra Petra, there she is, 
Three points, best girl. Three points for Petra. In conclusion, Fire Emblem Three Houses is an undeniable must-buy for Nintendo Switch and possibly the new high point for the series. It is a well-polished tactical RPG with a slick combat system refined for well over 20 years of Fire Emblem history, married to a wonderfully realized persona-like social link system that just works better than it has any right to. Three Houses is a big meaty dish with something for everyone to enjoy that just happened to stumble in its graphical department, but all is forgiven once you take a dive into actual gameplay. Fire Emblem Three Houses is one of the best games for the Nintendo Switch, a strong contender for Game of the Year, and will no doubt go down as one of the best tactical RPGs ever made. Do yourself a favor and play this game if you haven't already. I give Fire Emblem Three Houses a much deserved and near perfect score of 38 out of 40. And there you have a Fire Emblem Three Houses strong contender for Game of the Year. But what did you think? What would you rate it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And Parker Peters is brought to you by viewers like you. So check out my Patreon. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Some believe the dignity of the Empire rests on the results of the mock battle. That's an overstatement, of course. Still, we must do our best to prevail. You should take the time to learn each student's abilities. Perhaps some extra lessons and training sessions are in order? You look as if you have no idea what's going on here.